In the past two Going Deeper moments, we discussed how Luke and Matthew took Old Testament stories and figures and reconfigured them in new ways to show how Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament. It turns out they were just copying what they had seen happen from Jesus himself because on the night before Jesus' death, he does the exact same thing. We discussed this week, uh, this past Sunday, that Jesus' timing into Jerusalem that week of his death was no accident. He planned to enter the city on the greatest week of the Jewish calendar, that Passover week. He did this on purpose, to place himself squarely at the heart of the Jewish story and subsequently infusing it with new meaning, expanding it to include all nations and not just Israel itself anymore. To understand why and how he did this, we have to remember the point of the Passover celebration. We mentioned Sunday that Passover was a yearly meal, remember? And that it pointed people back to the time of slavery in Egypt and how God redeemed them from that slavery by sending a final plague that would kill all the firstborn in Egypt except those covered by the blood of the Lamb. As time progressed after that, the meal became more ceremonial, involving prayers and readings around the drinking of the wine and the eating of the bread and the lamb itself. And we're not quite sure how involved Jesus' last meal was, but it probably was similar to that ceremonial experience. So instead of covering the whole meal, since we don't know all the little details that happened in that particular situation, we're going to focus on just the elements that Jesus focused on and how he conspicuously missed one piece, or did he? So, let's start in Luke, chapter 22, and we're going to look at this whole setup that Jesus has, this final Passover meal. First, in Luke's account, we see two items in particular highlighted, the cup full of wine and the unleavened bread. And he starts here with the bread at verse 19. It says, And he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, those sitting at the table with him, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In other words, eat it, take it, consume it in remembrance of what I'm about to do. Now, why bread? Why bread? You see, for the people of Jesus' day, Bread was life. There was no supermarket with all the fruits and vegetables and, and, and crazy amount of junk food that I love to eat. None of that was there. Most of the people in Jesus' day were poor, simple folk. And bread was their life. It was their substance. If you had enough flour to be able to make bread, then you were going to survive one more day. Jesus takes the unleavened bread of the meal which served to remind the Israelites of God's soon coming salvation, how he's going to take them out of slavery quickly. And he breaks it for everyone at the table. And then he says it's his body. Now, that's weird, right? Because, wait a minute, I'm eating someone's body. That's kind of odd. But we have to remember that Jesus is trying to use this moment to place himself in the Old Testament story as well as prepare his followers for the death he knows is coming. So he uses this symbol so that when he does die, they'll think back to this meal and remember what he said. Jesus is using a symbol of life in the unleavened bread to say that he is life. And by allowing his body to be broken, he is giving that life to all who would eat of him. Or another way of saying it is to make him the one thing that sustains them from day to day. After the bread, he moves on to the cup of wine. In verse 20, he says, likewise, the cup after they had eaten, he says this, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. In a traditional Jewish Passover meal, the wine would represent the blood of the lamb that they had killed prior to leaving Egypt. 
So Jesus takes this moment to make his second point. What did the lamb's blood remind the people of? God providing an escape, right? Providing a promise of escape from judgment and death. And so Jesus is saying he's making a new promise, a new covenant with those who drink of his cup. His blood will be a marker of this new covenant between God and a new people, all who follow Jesus. And they will take his blessing to the nation. This is possible because Jesus' blood takes the place of the blood of the Lamb. His blood will provide the means of escape from judgment and death for all eternity, just like the blood of the Lamb on the doorposts covered the people from that death in Egypt. See, He becomes the substitute that absorbs the consequences of the evil of humanity and seals that new promise. Now, conspicuous in its absence is the mention of the lamb itself. We have the wine, we have the bread, but where's the central component? That lamb that had to be sacrificed to provide the blood, the lamb that had to be killed to give them that final nourishing meal to get them on their way from slavery. We have all the elements here at the table, but no lamb. Or do we? If Jesus' blood is taking the place of the lamb's blood, what does that make Jesus? The lamb, right? He's the innocent, spotless lamb, slaughtered to cover the sins of not just one household, but for all the families of the earth, from the beginning of time to the end. It's an incredible teaching moment that Jesus takes us through. Because he does not just take those sitting at the table, but he does take us through that. He takes that ancient practice that's already woven into the story that we've told so far of the people who God has redeemed, and he reshapes it around his death. But it's much more than that. See, Jesus does this all to root us, not just those at that table that night, but root us in that story. He gives this new meaning for all with this new covenant. So he would form this new covenant family that could keep participating in this remembering ceremony every generation afterward so that followers centuries down the line could see themselves sitting at the table with him before the end. He wants us to participate, not just understand, to remind us of where we belong. I don't know where you're at or the story you've been told or the story you've been telling others about you. I don't know all the ways you and I have contributed to the way the world is because we all do. But what I do know, what I do know is that this story about Jesus is meant to become your story. It's about a savior that takes everything in on himself, sheds his blood for us to make a new people with a new story, humanity 2.0. We all, every day, not just every year as the Jewish calendar celebrated this Passover meal, we need a reminder every day, fresh reminder to be grounded again in this story and to be shaped from the inside out by it, and by him.